Reality is complicated. Humans, on the other hand, are relatively simple. There is too much information floating around to constantly reanalyze reality. We tend to read things through models that we create of the world and how it works. These models allow us to make sense of the world and are known as schemas. We use schemas to organize our knowledge. They guide our thinking and behavior. We often develop them in childhood and sometimes through later experiences. Some schemas will help us to function well in society, but negative experiences might cause us to form unhelpful schemas. Care leavers may have learned not to form strong attachments to avoid pain, but as adults, they may struggle to form loving, committed relationships. Sometimes people can be taught to take on ideological schemas. When people join a religious faith, they often refashion all of their thinking in line with their newfound belief. They have changed the lens through which they view the world. They learned a new schema that might not map well onto reality. Arguably, the critical social justice approach to racism is a kind of schema which has a lot in common with the mistrust or abuse schema. When you read a lot of the current theories or attend CSJ-based training, your brain might start to interpret your experience of the world through this lens. Now, making an effort to see things how others see them can be worthwhile, especially if you disagree with them. It is good to challenge your views and avoid tribalism. But when we view reality through one negative schema alone, we might believe that one way of looking at the world is the only valid one. This can create fear, misunderstanding, defensiveness, and intolerance. When you read a lot of CSJ anti-racist literature from authors like Robin DiAngelo and Ibram X. Kendi, you might develop a CSJ mindset. You might start seeing people as racial avatars instead of as individuals. If race is the primary lens through which you view reality, you will begin to see racial power dynamics everywhere. This is a schema, the ideological schema of critical theories of race. One tenet of CSJ cell anti-racism is that racism is always present whenever people of different races interact. The goal is to spot it. Let's look at an example. A white shop assistant is arranging clothes on a rack when two customers enter the shop separately but at the same time. Imagine she approaches the white customer first and offers assistance. The critical race schema would immediately detect racism. The shop assistant prioritized the white customer, showing racial bias in believing that white people deserve priority. Now imagine she approaches the black customer first. The critical race schema would still identify racism. The shop assistant targeted the black customer, revealing her bias in believing that black people need to be supervised in shops while white people can be trusted to browse. This analysis is inevitable if you start with the assumption that every situation is tainted by racism. In reality, the shop assistant could have any number of non-racial reasons for her choice. But if we apply the CSJ schema with its slant towards mistrust and abuse, only a racist answer can be detected. A counterweight we hear from people of all ethnicities who have begun to see their colleagues in terms of their race and view everything through the lens of racial power dynamics. They intuitively feel ashamed of doing this and at the same time feel ashamed of that shame. They believe that the anti-racist training is racist as it makes them evaluate people by their race but they also believe that their objections are racist too. This sort of psychological acrobatics occurs because they have been told that colorblindness is racist. But their liberal intuitions tell them that they were less racist when they saw their colleagues as individuals rather than as racial categories. In her writings, Helen Pluckrose states, When I recently smiled at a lady with a black toddler, I had second thoughts because they were both black. Robin DiAngelo's nice racism insists that smiling is a white tactic to show off one's non-racism and is wearing to black people. Had I not read this book, I would probably have thought of me as just one woman smiling in pleasure at seeing a lovely baby. This is a common interaction among women and is almost certainly the correct and psychologically healthier interpretation. Of course, this does not mean we should never consider race. We should be self-aware and we should question our own thought patterns. But you are an individual. It is unlikely that you have the same racial biases that Rob and D'Angelo does. If you are white and you walk into a party that is made up of mostly black people and you don't feel scared, you're probably not in denial and being fragile. You're just not being Rob and D'Angelo. That's a good thing. We all have faulty schemas and should give thought to them and work on them. But committing to a CSJ racial schema is unlikely to make you a better person or a more psychologically healthy one. Resistant.